The brew house was created to capture and share with you the long history of the Genesee Brewery. But the brewery itself isn't half as interesting as the beer and the people who make it. Visit GeneseeBrewhouse.com. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. This is the Rochester Press Box presented by the Genesee Brew House and happy Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, good to have Bob Blyer with us, our football expert. We'll get back to that. Awesome to be wow. here. I'll keep you guys rounded today, okay? I okay. would be NFL superstar quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Catalana, Pat Duffy, what are you wearing? Went deep into the closet for this one. Roosevelt Leaks jersey, college oh. football hall of famer. Fun fact, uh, his junior year, led the team in rushing, third in Heisman balloting, was the favorite coming back, blew his knee out in spring practice, and a guy named Earl Campbell, who was a freshman, took all of his carries, played for the Bills for three years, but was a shell of what he was playing in college. Where is it going to play as a, as, a, as a holiday, as doing something a little bit special and kind of get into maybe some of the things in sports that we change? I'd like to start with the predictions you made last time you were here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been wow. hearing that for a few weeks now, yeah. Well, the Bills the Bills <laughs> uh, ten and 6 yeah. and Oh, you remember that, the huh? Yeah. Game, and you said something. Yeah, you must One, they can't go 10-6. and six. They still could go 9-7. <laughs> and seven. Yeah. Two, the Bengals are not eliminated from the playoffs yet. So those you two remember that as well? Oh, boy. Nathan Peter... Okay. Yeah. Um, what sports bothers you? Um, I I would have to say uh, finger pointing. Um, you're, I'm seeing that so much now in basketball and football. Everybody's critiquing uh, teammates and ownership, and I, I don't know. I just I think they're getting away from the basics of the game, and the money I think is driving a lot of decisions, and the Le'Veon holdout, and it's just it's to me it's just getting really convoluted. Um, the sport is so grand on its own. It's so it, there's such a huge following. Look at Duffy with the Bills. I mean, they could go over, and he'd still be at every freaking tailgate. So, Season tickets. True. Yeah, right. So I, I just think it's it's getting a little diluted. Uh, I don't know if it's the money. I don't know if it's the egos. I'm not sure what it is, but I, I would change try and change some of that. But probably impossible. I think a lot of this comes back to social media. It, it, people approach the way that they conduct themselves and relate to each other differently than they did 20 years ago. Yeah, well, that applies to way more than sports, though, yeah. right? And yeah. it's just we see it, a lot of us see it play out that much more in sports. I don't think that genie's going back in the bottle no. anytime soon. I think if anything else, it's going to get worse. How about you? you got something that... Well, it's coming, and I, I think it's long overdue in, in sports and college basketball. I think there's a lot of things that need to change in college basketball. I think that game needs to evolve a little bit to get a little more interest maybe in the regular season. It is coming. It's going to be with the league, but that whole one-and-done rule, I think it'll help the NBA, and I think it'll help college basketball. There are multi-talented players who can come right out and go to the NBA. They should be allowed to, and I think the college basketball game needs to change a little bit you know, I know some in the specifics of the rules, but move that three-point line back. Change the game a little bit. Open it up a little bit more so it doesn't just become that back and forth. But those things for that specific sport in college basketball, um, I would like to see that evolve. And baseball-wise, there's a million things that baseball needs to evolve in. If they want to go into the next decade plus and still bring fans in. Football, give them a lot of grief for a lot of things. Football's not afraid to make changes in that way. I think baseball needs to make changes, big-time changes to the way they handle their I know game. you probably got a bunch. Pick one. The one that's been bothering me the most this season, pay the kids who play college sports. And I'll give you an example. Last weekend, uh, Syracuse had a big Manhattan weekend. They played Notre Dame at Yankee Stadium, and then the Syracuse basketball team was playing at the Garden, right? Uh, if you wanted to go to both of those games, it was going to cost you probably around $1,000 <laughs> to get in the door and watch these games play. Meanwhile, of the, what, Mike, 90 kids between the football roster and the basketball roster, three of them are going to have a genuine opportunity to play professional sports. Those kids get nothing out of it. Meanwhile, these schools are raking in money and selling advertising and upping their view, and bayheim has got a shoe contract, and he's getting money, and he's got assistants that are getting money. I mean... Come on, how do you justify just Syracuse, which isn't even a power football school, having that kind of money coming in over the weekend, yet none of these kids get anything out of it? I mean, this stuff wasn't even talked about when, when I was younger or when I was playing, about paying athletes. You got money. your money under the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think 
the one thing I got when I was at Richmond was a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, you got paid over the table as a member of the New England Patriots. I <laughs> did, and I kept my first pay stub, so I, I've got that going for me. Did you <laughs> cash the paycheck? I had to. <laughs> <laughs> well, was there a story about Ricky Henderson like framed his first paycheck and it was for like a million, million dollars? Yeah, and yeah. His, his agent walked in and said, you, you know you got to take that to the bank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Ricky. This is the Rochester Press Box presented by the Genesee Brew House. The Bills are on a bye week, but we'll talk about them next. The Press Box is brought to you in part by Bay and Goodman Pizza, a local Rochester favorite. Corner of North Winton and Browncroft, Bay and Goodman Pizza. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. This is the Rochester Press Box presented by the Genesee Brew House. We had two weeks to enjoy that, yeah. that victory that the Bills had over, over the Jets. As you look at what's left for the schedule post by, right. what do you see? Well, I know Pat's head exploded when Sean McDermott came out right after the week of the game. And the first thing he said was the process continues. The process and the plan. Look, I think we've seen a slight little glimpse into them recognizing that the other side of the ball needs to be played, and that's in terms of bringing in some speed to the offense. The Bills' offense was so slow and so predictable, especially at the wide receiver position, that whether you're picking guys off other rosters or playing guys off the practice squad, speed is the NFL in 2018 and gone beyond that. So I want to see them recognize that a little bit more. That's what I'm looking for in the second half. And obviously this last part of the year, we want to see how Josh Allen does. We want to see if he can progress. But the fact that the team is finally recognizing that they need to score points, whether they can or they can't, I think is a sign that hopefully that is the big part of the offseason. Schedule works in their favor a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's statistically the easiest schedule left in the NFL. And I'm telling you, man, I am all in on Sunday. I can't wait for this. Doug Marone coming back with Jacksonville to Buffalo, right? Because you know this, Mike, being around that team when Marone was there, you know, like we were at training camp. When Marone left, nobody in Western New York thought this was going to be a big deal, right? And you had national media members, oh, Doug Marone and success. And he shows up at Jacksonville and has that great year last season. Everybody that covers the Bills... Everybody that was around Marone for those two years knew that this thing was going to implode. And you're watching it implode because Doug Marone can push guys around and tell them what to do. But you can't do that with NFL players. And you're seeing the fruits of that labor happening now in Jacksonville. If the Bills can get this game on Sunday, dear Lord, it'll be the happiest day I've had in the last, what, three or four years? Mm -hmm. And it could happen because they're not playing the way they were expected. Jacksonville, I mean. No, and I think when you look at the rest of the Bills' schedule, they are playing teams, and this is when this sort of happens, when teams know who they are, the Jets, the Dolphins, the Lions, they know who they are. Of course, those teams are saying the same thing when they're playing against the Bills, too, but it's different than when you're playing against the Patriots or the Chargers or one of the top teams. The game is really different now. As it's, the, the Bills have the number one ranked defense in the NFL, <laughs> and back in your day and, and you know, 20 years afterwards, that would have made them instant contenders. Now it's just a footnote. I know. Look at the Bears and 85, all the, all the publicity they're getting now about how great a team they are, are they the best of all time? Um, Buffalo needs to start on the defensive side, but there's one thing that I noticed in the Jets game that I think is going to really help the Bills moving forward. It's the way Shady ran the ball. And I don't know if I look at the game differently than most, but what I noticed is he's going north and south. He's going downhill fast. There's no more juking and 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 all that Le'Veon work because he's. It's amazing. He went downhill. He must have watched Ivory when Ivory was in there because you talk about a tough, hard runner that'll fall forward every time. Shady did that against the Jets, and I was amazed. I was telling everybody around me that I was watching the game with. He looked like a different back. I don't know if he had a fire lit under his fanny or if he was talked to or whatever. But, man, he made the O-line look good because he went downhill. Yes, yeah, so, so fans are going to look at this thing and say, okay, well, which is the real team? The team that beat the Jets or the team that lost to the Bears the way they did the week before? Well, but, I mean, beating – listen, that was, I had a blast watching that Jets game. It was fun. It was the first time all season I was really excited about this team. But let's be real. It's a guy you had 10 days on the roster beating one of the worst teams in the NFL. It doesn't really mean anything. When a guy who was signed off the practice squad has 103 yards for you and then the much maligned second-year receiver follows it up with 93, I don't think it means much I to think you. it does. It's the NFL. I really do. 
Um, it, it, it's so significant. I don't care if you're playing the Jets. You get, like you said, a guy ten days on the roster, and he and he's successful. The one thing I do see is the, and, and we've referenced this before. Two times when the Bills have looked really good, the Minnesota game and the Jets game, both games where Brian Dable looked to be in control of the offense. Called a great game against the Vikings. Then I thought I had a terrible game the next week against the Packers. So we'll see what it is going forward as teams maybe adjust a little. And uh, Steve Tasker on the John Murphy Show said something. I thought it was interesting. He said, you know, when they were talking about the week before, what's it going to take to turn things around? And his answer was, it's going to take one play. It's going to take one big <laughs> play just to light a fire on the rest of the team, and the whole thing's going to snowball. Yeah. And it sounded ridiculous at the time, but it was exactly what happened. How about the fact <laughs> they had not driven from their own territory to score a touchdown in, I think, eight, seven weeks? That's incredible, right? Yeah. And they did it in two plays against the Jets. So we'll see how they do now back home against the Jags. This is the Rochester Press Box. Is it a buy the Genesee Brew House? Like it or not is next. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Here's a Press Box trivia answer brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box, presented by the Genesee Brew House. As a uniform and jersey collector, like it or not, the idea that Pittsburgh Steelers fans were burning Le'Veon Bell jersey. I mean, listen, you paid 100 bucks for it. Do whatever you want with it, right? But I do find it funny, right? Like, what are you trying to prove? You gave them your money already. Like, Le'Veon got a cut of that jersey, and the NFL got the other cut of it. The Steelers got some of it, too. Burning it doesn't get you your money back. So, like, all you're doing is making yourself look extra stupid. Like, I'm mad at you. I gave you my money. And now I have literally nothing for it. You know what I hope happens? I hope the Steelers then come out with one of those plans where if you bring a Le'Veon Bell <laughs> jersey back, you get 50 bucks off a of James sure. Conner jersey. And I hope they feel stupid. But we always see fans do this. And now we've referenced the social media stuff before so that you get to be on social media burning your jersey. Well, you look like an idiot. That's the way I look well, at it. Steeler Nation, they're crazy. I have to ask you, like yeah. or not, the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I don't like what has happened to them because it, it was an odd way that they approached the offseason. They were probably too, um, too, too many times they looked at players like a Jason Peters or a Darren Sproles, two guys who are great pros, maybe one in the Hall of Fame, maybe another one's going to at least you know, be one of those guys considered. And they were both hurt during that run, and they brought them both back, and they brought some other guys back, and they, they, they were a little too loyal. I think. And I think it ended up costing them. And teams don't want to see that. Even to some of the guys who helped them win the Super Bowl, they don't want to see that. And I don't think there was the proper amount of turnover of the roster. It's tough to do when you win. And I think they felt an obligation to those guys to say, we won it last year and you weren't part of it and brought them back. And they've sort of gotten let down by them. There's a lot of reasons why they've been down that way. Um, and I, but I think their roster needs a, a, a shot, and I think it'll have to come next offseason. I'm sorry. I think something's wrong with your mic because you said something. I was, you said, Did you just say Darren Sproles is a potential pro football player? No, no, no. Finger? I think Darren Sproles would be one of those guys that when you look at his total numbers are spectacular. Mm -hmm. When I say he's had a great NFL career, he's not going to be in the Hall of Fame, but he's been a great player. Okay, but like, the fact that you used Hall of Fame, okay, you can never call me a fanboy ever again. Yeah, Darren, Darren Sproles, Sproles made most of his time in the Chargers and the Saints, and he's been good with the Eagles. No, no, Relax. No, no, no. Okay. Darren Sproles, one of the all-time great returners, special teams guy, great guy coming out of the backfield. Are you really hating on the little guy? Bobby, he, was, he was Hill before Hill, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bobby, you, you, you hear a lot yeah. about you know teams sort of party their way out of the league. Not out of the league so much, but you know championship teams to celebrate maybe a little too hard. Does that happen? It has to because, you know, but, but then again, you look at, you look at those, those franchises like, like New England. And it's just time and time again. And I think it's, it starts not only maybe in the front office, but the leadership with, with veteran players. And I think if you get caught up in, in success 
and, and, and glory, if you don't have great leadership on your team, teammates, it's tough to stay grounded. It is, really that why, is. is that why you're talking no, about I don't, needing roster turnover? Yeah, but I don't think it was about the partying and all that kind of stuff. I, I think it's it was actual football reasons. The Eagles still have a young quarterback in Wentz, so the idea of still building around him going forward, and they uh, technically they could still make a run this year. I just Do don't they make it. the playoffs? Well, they've got to, you know, they've got to, you know, at the time we're taping this, I don't know what happened at Saints game. That would have been a big upset. But they can make a run. They still have four games in the division, twice with the Redskins. So all that is still on the table. But in the NFC, they don't look like a contender. This is the Rochester Press Box. It's going to buy the Genesee Brew House Unfinished Business is next. And now here's this week's MVP experience stat of the week. Brought to you by Sport Clips, where it's good to be a guy. No appointment ever needed. Bacon, egg, cheese. Only one way to make this better. Another one. Dunkin' Go-To's. Get two bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches for $5. America runs on Dunkin'. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. This is the Rochester Press Box, presented by the Genesee Brew House Unfinished Business, brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. You need to broaden your sports horizons to appreciate what you have. You know, Thanksgiving was this past Thursday, and it reminded me of a Thanksgiving tradition my family had. And that tradition was my father finding a way to get out of hanging <laughs> with his in-laws. And he came up with this brilliant trick, and I suggest if you're a father you try this too. He would take myself and then myself and my brother from Rochester to Detroit for the Thanksgiving Day Lions football game every year. We went for like eight years, and it was the guise of, I'm spending time with my sons, but really he didn't want to be with the in-laws. So... <laughs> We would go every year to this game, and it was such an experience. One, I mean, the Lions weren't that good, but you had some of the best teams in the NFL coming. And it's Thanksgiving in the middle of the day, and I'm eating a giant turkey leg watching live football in a stadium that I had never been to before. And it was in those trips that I started to realize what we have in western New York is very, very special. Because Detroit's a blue-collar town, and they got fans that care, but it was nothing like a Sabres game or a Bills game. In fact, watching it inside Ford Field there, it's like watching football inside a mall. You've been there. You know what I'm talking about. What I'm getting at is, right? The tailgate scene in Buffalo, the experience of going to a game in Buffalo, is like none other. And you read about that online, but you don't fully appreciate what you have until you try other stuff. I encourage you, go up to Toronto, watch a Raptors game, right? Head to Pittsburgh, catch a Steelers game, go to Cleveland, watch a Browns game. And when you get back, you realize what we have here is something special. And it's something that you can't wrap your head around until you go somewhere else. That's pretty cool. It was awesome. The thing that sticks out to me, though, is the turkey leg at the stadium. Oh, it was like huge, like the size of your head. <laughs> getting hungry. Sorry. <laughs> Bobby, what do you got? Yeah, it's, uh, people are saying, is the NBA in trouble? And, and, and I, I, I'd like to answer that by saying I think there's becoming a lot of parity in the NBA now with all the trades, LeBron going to L.A., not being successful as a team. Uh, Jimmy Butler is now traded to the Sixers. I think that's going to be a big story as the, as the season goes on. The Warriors are in a little bit of turmoil. Everybody's pointing their fingers. And, and, and Draymond's questioning whether KG's got, uh, or I'm sorry, KD's got a little bit of a, a selfishness to him. And, and I say, you know, NBA fans are NBA fans. The cream is going to rise to the top. Uh, the, 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 the competition's always going to be strong. The playoff runs are always enjoyable to watch. So just be patient during this regular season. Let all the free agency play out. Let the parity come into play. But, but I firmly believe that those teams who are the best teams and have been for history are going to be the ones that rise to the top. It's going to be a great NBA season. You mentioned Golden State. It's like a generational team. This might be the last year they can hold this together. Well, I, I think they need to keep Clay. I think they need to keep, uh, obviously, Curry, and if they leave, uh, uh, if they keep KD, I think that whoever they match around them is going to, they're going to still be strong for a long time. Fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, reports of the demise of the NFL are greatly exaggerated. I don't know if you've seen the ratings recently, but the ratings are back up. The ratings are close to what they were a couple of years ago when it started to dip. Do I think the kneeling down, the national anthem thing, yeah, it probably impacted the league for a while. I think most of that has gone by. I know there are certain people who aren't back in, and that's fine. But look what the NFL has done. The rule changes. Everybody complains about scoring is up. The games are exciting. 
maybe outside of the games we see sometimes in Western New York. And now the NFL is getting ready, just perfect timing. No matter how many dumb things Roger Goodell has done through the years, he knows how to make money. The TV deals are up. And the big thing for the NFL is not only are they going with CBS and Fox and NBC and everybody, the regular networks, but they've got everybody else bidding too, whether it's Yahoo or Facebook or Twitter, talking about broadcasting games in one form or another. The NFL is long from dead. We just talked about the NBA. The NBA is big. The NBA is doing really well. But the NFL is still king, and it shows no sign of losing its crown. That's such a part of our holiday weekend, too. I mean, it's a, it's a cornerstone, really. It always is. And the biggest part of the NFL season is just starting. This is the Rochester Press Box, presented by the Genesee Brew House Unfinished Business. is brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. Bobby, good to have you back. Thanks for owning up to those predictions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be the last time I do that, by the way. <laughs> Mike? All right, yeah. thanks. Happy holidays, everyone, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week with the Rochester Press Box. Cheers.